That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to review Coming to America, the sequel to the 1988 comedy classic which reunites Eddie Murphy and a whole cast of characters uh, from the previous film, uh, being released on Amazon Prime March 5th, 2021. The well, I was very excited to watch this movie. Same. Yes, uh, but let's just let me tell the basic story. Mm. So, we find King Akim, mm -hmm. played by Eddie Murphy, at home in Zamunda in his palace. He is confronted by a general from the neighboring nation called Nextoria. I, th I believe that's what they said. Yeah. Um, uh, Izzy. General Izzy, played by Wesley Snipes. Who was a character in the first one, played by Calvin Lockhart. Oh, okay. Um, the issue is that there's like a trade embargo. There's tensions between these two nations, and Zamunda is thriving because McDowell's, which is sort of like the McDonald's ripoff from the first film. By, that was built by Cleo McDowell, played by John Amos. Who's Lisa, the queen's dad. Mm -hmm. Um, is thriving in Zamunda, so they are uh, rich with wealth, but the neighboring nation, General Izzy's nation, is poor. So he's basically threatening war if they cannot alleviate that, and part of that is to join the families. And also, uh, Akeem screwed them over because he was betrothed to Izzy's sister. He was supposed to film. marry, yeah, yeah. Who, was played, who was and is played by Vanessa Bell Calloway. <laughs> yes. Um, so... General Izzy says you need to either have one of your daughters, one of the princesses, marry my son because you don't have a son. So um, James Earl Jones reprises his role, but he's close to death. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, like, you know, you do have a son because when you were back in America in the late 80s, you got some lady pregnant. You just didn't know about it. So... Before King Akim can deal with that, his father, the king, says, I'm going to die soon, so I want my funeral. <laughs> I want my funeral while I'm alive. Mm -hmm. So they have a big funeral, which we'll talk about. Then King Akim and Semi, played by Arsenio Hall, go to Queens to find his bastard son, as they say. Mm -hmm. And they do find him. His name is Lavelle. Lavelle Johnson. And he's played by... Jermaine Fowler. So we get flashbacks when it is explained to King Akeem how this came to be. So we get flashbacks from the original film with some um, sort of like de-aged sequences. Mm -hmm. But we find out that King Akeem had sex with a woman played by Leslie Jones. Mary. Mary. And that's how Lavelle was born. Mm -hmm. Prince or King Akeem very easily convinces Lavelle to move to Zamunda to take his place as the prince. And he only agrees to go if he can bring his mother, Mary. Mm -hmm. So they go. Lavelle is groomed to be king. He meets his uh, bride-to-be, General Izzy's daughter, who's played by Tiana Taylor. Bapoto. Bapoto. And uh, he is about to marry her when he has cold feet because he has fallen in love with his personal groomer. Mm -hmm. So he runs off. Right before, like the night before the wedding, back to Queens to marry his groomer. Because he also overhears a conversation between Snipes and Murphy about how he's a pawn he's in their basically a elaborate pawn. chess game. Mm -hmm. King Akeem goes to Queens to find him, but when he does, he's sort of reminded that that's what he did in the first movie, was he went for true love instead of whatever he was told to do. He was, so he does condone... He was living for love. Living for love, Madonna. Um, so he does condone Lavelle's marriage to his groomer. While King Akeem is gone for the one day, his oldest daughter is... She had sort of been groomed to be queen, and she always thought that she would take the throne, even though in Zamunda it has to be a son. She still thought that that was going to be her. So while King Akeem is gone, General Izzy comes to like kidnap her, and she, along with her two sisters, fend him off. So when King Akeem comes back to have Lavelle uh, marry his true love, we find out that like the trade embargo has been lifted. So somehow that magically <clears throat> happened in the day he was gone, I guess. Um, and everything is peaceful. Like that's the end. 
Uh, and uh, the eldest daughter is Mika, played by Kiki Lane. Uh, he, he has three daughters. Uh, the second eldest, Oma, is played by his own daughter, um, something Murphy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> sorry to this one. I can't read my writing. Uh, oh, Bella Murphy, sorry. Bella Murphy. All right, well, where, where, where do you want to be? Oh, what do you like about this film? Um, well, I have very fond memories watching this film on cable as a kid, and I, 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 in fact, very distinct memories of uh, Eddie Murphy, like the wonder of watching Eddie Murphy play all those characters, uh, you know, I remember blowing my mind. Um, I quite liked it. I, I, I love the reunion of him and Wesley Snipes again. It's directed by Craig Brewer, um, who of course directed them both in Dolomite Is My Name. Um, and I'm, I'm a fan of everything Craig Brewer's done, with the exception of his Footloose remake. Um, but it, if, if you like this world and these characters, you're, you're going to enjoy the film. Um, I think the real star is Ruthie e. Carter's costume design, uh, because it is uh, the, the wardrobe choices are fantastic. Yeah, the um, costuming is exquisite. Especially Kiki Lane and uh, Tiana Taylor looks... <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, everyone. Every everyone. Even yes. Leslie Jones. Not even, but Leslie Jones. Yeah, yeah. Leslie Jones um, was good. Um, yeah. Uh, and then of course Sherry Headley uh, as Lisa the Queen. Um, yeah. My first note is Wesley Snipes is a treasure. Yes. Yeah, he's so good. I want to see him in everything. You know, it's such it's such a misfortune he that his performance in Dolomite as uh, Dervil Martin should have been an Oscar nominated role, but. Okay, so I think the highlight of the film is seeing Eddie and Arsenio play these various characters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, the, James Earl Jones, as the king, he has sort of a confidant who... I know people don't like when I say witch doctor. They didn't like that when I... What? What's the movie with Loretta Devine? Uh, spell. Spell, yeah. People didn't like that I called her a witch doctor instead of like a voodoo instead princess. Instead of a homeopathic... Or... Um... Yeah, she's like a homeopathic <laughs> practitioner. What's like... wrong with witch doctors? I don't know. People Pe are crazy. People practice witchcraft. And... Um, anyway, the king has a like witch doctor confidant who kind of directs uh, King Akeem to his son and the queens. But anyway, that witch doctor is played by Arsenio Hall. <laughs> Baba. Baba. I thought that was really funny. I think the best part there is uh, when he crashes uh, the betrothal of uh, Tiana Taylor to, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Wesley Snipes says, whose auntie is that? <laughs> um, okay, so the funeral. The mm -hmm. king has a funeral. The eulogy is performed by Morgan Freeman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the king is propped up like in a coffin or casket, I guess like on a main stage for everyone to see and he's not dead so he's watching the um you know the the funeral and they have en vogue mm -hmm. salt and peppa and gladys knight perform and they all perform sort of their popular songs but like with the lyrics twisted for the king mm -hmm. i thought that was really funny sort of like that lady bunny roast okay <laughs> that's a deep reference <laughs> for whoever's <laughs> watching this <laughs> um and then the king dies during his funeral. Which I, during Gladys Knight's singing. During Gladys Knight's performance. Um, okay. I think my biggest issue with the film is the characterization of Lavelle. Mm -hmm. So Lavelle is kind of... How did you describe him earlier? Kind of... He's underdeveloped. There's kind of dead space. The flat space is... No, he's, he's not aimless. He's... Um, He's not a... He's diminished. Diminished, that's the word. He's not a loser. He's just diminished. Like, we find out that he... Went, like, he seems like a smart guy who's motivated, but he goes to a job interview, um, and the owner or the, the person running the company is played by Colin Jost. And I believe that the painting of his forefathers in the background that created that company, I think, is a uh, reference to Trading Places. Okay. There's a little white man in that. So, Colin Joe's character is just like this privileged white guy, and he's supposed to be an example of nepotism, and it is explained to us that Lavelle didn't graduate college, like he's three credits shy because his mom needed help at home. Mm -hmm. So he's not a loser, he's just sort of diminished, and, and so his main job at the moment is like, uh, what do you call them? People try to sell scalping. scalping tickets at like a 
sporting event. Mm -hmm. I really wish that that character would have been more of like a regal type person. So I think the fact that Leslie Jones is his mom who's playing kind of this like wild lady, that's funny and it, and it works really well. She's very well. good. Yeah. yeah, she works really well. But it would have been fun to have Lavelle be this like regal guy and it's kind of like unexplained, like based on his mother and where he's from, he shouldn't be this like poised and dignified, oh, because he's the son of a king. Mm -hmm. But no, they may, you know, they give him like this sort of like, I don't know, this junior afro and he's, I just, I, I didn't. I, as Fowler, to me, he, he, I kept getting Chris Tucker vibes. I got, he sounds just like Kevin Hart. But uh, he does just fine. I, I think there's really, it's like there's so much going on and it's so jam-packed with everything that there's really no room for him to develop. Like his romance with Marambe is just two scenes, basically. Yeah. Uh, unlike, you know, us watching Eddie Murphy fall in love with Lisa right. in, in the first film where it's like, oh, you know, this kind of is pointless. This is true love, makes yeah. Makes sense, but. Um, so Lavelle's character didn't really work well for me. Also, I think the film doesn't look expensive. Not like the first one. Sure. Yeah. So it was shot at Tyler Perry Studios, apparently. And all the um, exterior shots of the palace. The palace are Rick Ross's estate, which of course explains why he's... And Rick Ross is in the movie as one of General one... Izzy's uh, soldiers. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't look expensive at all. I don't want to say it looks cheap because the costuming really elevates it. But yes. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel expensive combined with... You know, animal CGI is tricky. And uh, th there's a, a scene where he has to go through some princely undertakings to prove that he's worthy of the throne, including something with this lion that... Mm. Yeah. Okay, but getting back to what really worked well for me, uh, you know, we get the barbershop quartet, mm -hmm. of the old man played by Arsenio and Eddie really funny like mm -hmm. highlights and we get to see them in the barbershop twice mm -hmm. they are also invited to the wedding at the end of the film in Zamunda so that was lovely um when we first see General Izzy's Wesley Snipes like compound with the soldiers trading they're like on like dance dance revolution and then they're all shake like doing shake shake weights I thought that was really funny oh his walk everything uh, Wesley is so perfect <laughs> even how he says Bapoto uh, yeah when General Izzy introduces his daughter to Lavelle the prince Tiana, Ta Tiana Taylor, she performs uh, her own version of Prince's song, Get Off, mm -hmm. which I thought was really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. The music in this film is good, which made me wish I could have seen it in a theater. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been fun. Yeah, it was supposed to, Paramount, it was a Paramount production that was supposed to come out in August, and that was uh, uh, bought by Amazon Prime, of course. But Another um, really good scene is part of the process of Lavelle becoming like a prince, he has to do three things. He has to learn how to be dignified. He, I forget what the three things are. He has to show courage, which is like clipping the uh, whiskers off of a lion. Mm -hmm. And bravery. And bravery or something, whatever. But so after he does the whiskers, they basically make him get circumcised in front of like a group of people. Mm -hmm. And then we have a little witch doctor showing like the foreskins of all the previous um, kings. I thought that was really funny. Also, during sort of like the wedding, like, I guess like the wedding reception or whatever, like the wedding announcement party mm -hmm. where the Queen and Leslie Jordan get drunk. Oh, yes. That was a really fun that scene. That was a fun scene. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we're also forgetting to mention Tracy Morgan and Lou Nell are both uh, part of the relatives from Queens. Tracy Morgan plays Uncle Lavelle's Reem. uncle, Uncle Reem. I thought he was fun. He kind of is to Lavelle what Arsenio Hall is to Eddie Murphy's yeah. character. That worked well. Um, my very last note is Arsenio um, also comes back as the preacher man. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought he oh looked like God. Cheryl Underwood. <laughs> yeah, and once you said that, I couldn't stop seeing it. I thought he looked like some... What's the, the world that Beetlejuice is from? Oh, yeah, he could have been, like, yeah. yeah. Um, 
yeah, I don't, I, I, to me, uh, Dolomite is my name, has an edge from this particular team of people. Um, and it doesn't have, for me, the same sense of magic as um, the 1988 film Coming to America. But, uh, you know, you're, you're smiling throughout, even if you're not laughing uproariously. And clearly the people making it had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I think that... I also probably had very high expectations. What would you give this film? A three out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.